Pastor Ed here with Daily Devotions for Tuesday, March the 28th, 2023. Uh, in keeping with my uh, practice of the, of the past number of weeks, we're going to focus on a deeper exploration of uh, our gospel reading from this past Sunday, which was Matthew 25, 31 to 46, uh, sometimes called the Great or Last Judgment, sometimes called the Parable of the Sheep and the Goats, although you, an argument can be made that it's not really a parable. Talk maybe more about that tomorrow, although I talked about it in my sermon as well. But what I'm going to read for you is verses 31, 32, and 33 for today. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. I mentioned in my sermon that uh, an English clergyman and scholar by the name of Ian Paul uh, wrote what I found to be a really, really interesting article entitled, What Did Jesus Have Against Goats? Uh, because in our normal reading of this, the, the sheep are good and the goats are bad. Even the children's video that we used on Sunday made the point that you know sheep, sheep obey the, ma the, the, the shepherd and, and goats are independent and ornery and do their own thing. And so that's, that's the distinction being made here. Um, and is that what Jesus is saying? Um, well, he would argue against that. Uh, he talks about a presentation that a, um, uh, a Richard Good of Newman University in Birmingham, England, uh, once gave in talking about uh, uh, mixed-use uh, pastures and mixed herds, um, and in and, and in particular, he points out that in richer pastures further west in the Mediterranean, uh, think Greece and, and Italy and so forth, the land is good enough to support single species herds, but further east, where the grazing land is scrub, scrubbier, then mixed herds are essential since the goats can graze the harder uh, ground. Herding mixed flocks in resource poor areas is advantageous, he says. The goat's non-selective diet and ability to independently forage harsher, scrubbier locations complements the sheep's requirement to graze more grass-rich habitats, thereby efficiently exploiting uh, different portions of the same pasture. Too many of either species in a flock, sheep or goat, could mean the depletion and possible destruction of pasturage. So consequently, maintaining the right balance between goats and sheep was essential for the preservation of the pasture and also the flock in a ratio of um, two goats to three sheep is, is sort of optimal, he talks about. And so the, but he asked the question, so why do we have this negative view of the goats in Matthew 25 here, this um, story of the sheep and the goats? Well, he argues that it's almost because universally it's always been read in light of the parable of the wheat in the tares in Matthew 13. Uh, where, if you remember, uh, the wheat and the weeds are allowed to grow up together until the time of the harvest, then the separated, uh, you know, the, the wheat is separated, the, 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 uh, 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 the weeds are separated out and burned. Uh, so the emphasis um, is kind of carried over to this parable on the contrast between the good ones uh, and the bad ones. But he points out that in rabbinic literature, uh, goats are seen as of, of being of equal value with sheep, and in some cases, more valuable. Instead, many commentators think that Jesus' teaching in Matthew 25 has actually been influenced by Ezekiel 34, verses 17 to 22. I, I won't read it for you, but it, it mentions the action of separation as judgment, uh, and it includes a reference to both sheep and goats, but the key thing is that the judgment is not on the basis of the type of livestock, either sheep or goats, but on the behavior of each. So, Sheep and other sheep are, are judged, and the, and the goats are judged amongst each other. Uh, that seems to be the distinction. So, yeah, so what's going on in, in the passage that we had on Sunday? Well, he writes, goats reproduce faster than sheep. And if a herdsman is going to keep his flock properly balanced, then as a matter of course, he'll need to cull the male kids, baby goats, since otherwise they'll outnumber the sheep, and with too many males, he will not have a supply of milk. A small herd would typically only need a couple of males. When we look at Matthew 25, he says, we see that the word translated goat is actually the word uh, eraphus, uh, the male term for a baby goat. Um, 
It's also used, ironically, he says, by the elder brother in Luke 15, 29, the parable of the prodigal son. Remember, the, the one son gets his inheritance, he goes off, he squanders it, he comes back. Father is so happy, he kills the fatted calf, um, and the older brother is upset. And so, in verse 29, he says, uh, All these years I've been working like a slave for you. I've never disobeyed your command, yet you've never given me even a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. It's that same word, Eraphos. Uh, that's used here in the sheep and the goats. It's not just goats in general, but but baby goats. Um, so Jesus' reference to the separation appears to be drawing on this well-known and regular occurrence in herding um, of separating out and culling the young male goats um, that the herdsman would do as a natural part uh, of his work. In other words, the focus is not on the different types of animals, but on the process of separation instead. Um, and in fact, he points out that after verse 33 uh, in our passage, the two groups are never again referred to as sheep and goats, uh, but simply those on the king's right and those on the left. Um, so it's really a, a discussion or a conversation of, uh, of, of trying to point out something, again, would have been well known to people in Jesus's day um, that, you know, separating one from another, something that was that was done by herdsmen, uh, uh, separating, culling the the, the 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 baby goats out from the out of the herd, um, and as as he points out, and I think even used in my sermon, you have the example of uh, the only thing equivalent would be you know a grocery shopper separating the apples from the pears. It's not that one is better than the other; it's just that they're different, and so. I think a really interesting take on that. We can't just assume that the sheep are good and the goats are bad. Um, so we'll take a look at then maybe what he's really talking about in this passage uh, tomorrow. Till then, take care.